All right, we have arrived at pillar number one within section one of The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. So we've talked about a little bit in the preface and in the intro to the book um, on what like what these pillars will be about um, and we'll get into further detail on each one but essentially as we go through uh, these are the things we're relying on as we are overcoming and, and facing obstacles to better transform our experience of life uh, to live a better life and also to uh, have kind of a better outcome of what we're trying to accomplish in life so Pillar number one within perception is called the discipline of perception. And with that, we are going to introduce a very notorious name, and that is Mr. John D. Rockefeller. So Mr. Rockefeller was arguably the one of the wealthiest people to ever walk the earth. Um, and so basically it had kind of given us a, a prerequisite of, of him being an oilman, a bookkeeper, an aspiring investor, um, and really just kind of his uh, origin stories, if you will. Um, so the discipline of perception, um, we could begin in a place where uh, basically he was faced with um, some pretty intense hardships in life. So he uh, had faced the greatest market depression in history and it hit him just as he was finally getting a hang of things. So he would end up going through four market recessions in his lifetime um, and not just the ones that you had faced and survived if you were plus the 2000s. Uh, this is way back in the day where the stock market was just getting created. So I'm assuming it would be much more ruthless <laughs> to go through these crashes. Um, and yet he was able to not only get through them, but really come to thrive in them. Uh, and so one of his strengths, Mr. Rockefeller's strengths, was being able to remain calm during chaos and see reality for what it is, viewing the obstacle as an opportunity to learn. So as a young man, he was very sharp and very witty about looking at his own experiences and other business experiences when market conditions kind of rode the tide of the economy and, and economic crashes. So just this alone can be a lesson in and of itself, and that is to learn as obstacles come up. If we're never learning, we're going to recommit probably the same behavior. And if we got a bad outcome with that behavior, we're going to really be causing ourselves a lot of self-inflicted pain because we're not learning from the obstacles that we are facing. Um, but with that, being able to stay calm during chaos and see reality for what it is. So even if a market crash is better or worse for you than your neighbor or not as hard for you as your neighbor, you have to really kind of extract yourself away from what is actually going on to see what is going on, if that makes sense, um, and seeing reality for what it is. Um, so as a young man in a, in a mature uh, professional, um, okay, sorry, a little redundant there on Mr. Rockefeller, but uh, as he grew larger and more powerful, the more he enjoyed actually the chaos because everyone grew fearful and panicked, he grew calmer and more strategic. The wealthy grew richer in chaos because of everyone's emotionality. Um, so let me kind of unpack that just a little bit. So uh, everyone is obviously going through these obstacles at this time. And yet what made him so incredibly effective during this is that he was able to learn, which led to him acquiring larger businesses or, or more share, more territory, if you will. And as he's growing in size and, and power and influence, he's now actually taking these moments uh, and turning them into desirable times for him because he knows as everyone is getting scared and as everyone's getting emotional, uh, he is kind of deregulating his emotions in a way that says, you guys can kind of do that. I'm going to sit tight and I'm just going to make very strategic moves. And then when you come out of those bad times, you're now looking two or three or even 10 times as powerful because you had this ability to be calm in the chaos and see reality for what it is. And so this is maybe kind of a sub point, but the, the wealthy grow richer in chaos because of everyone's emotionality, meaning uh, the few that can kind of take the boat and stay calm through the rocky shores are the ones that are going to be able to uh, absorb uh, the things that people are kind of throwing away or, or acting on uh, because they are the ones staying cool and calm through everything. Uh, this is a learned skill, obviously, uh, must train the mind to turn obstacles into educational moments. 
elements. So that's a little redundant to the top part, but just remember that the more you practice that, um, not only to train your mind to look for the opportunity to learn, but also to know that during the chaos is the time to learn. Uh, very, very important. Okay, so um, just kind of takeaways here from what I had. So it is how we view or perceive obstacles which is the keys to success? Are we emotional and irrational or are we composed? Just a good question um, to kind of marinate on a little bit. So are our brains evolved from an environment that was very different from today, still primed to detect threats and dangers, uh, which don't necessarily exist. Our safety isn't threatened, yet we still tend to react emotionally. Unhelpful perceptions can invade our mind and throw us off our compass. So what this is essentially saying is that there is a hard wiring in our actual system that we used to run away from danger and threats, which makes sense because otherwise we'd be eaten and killed. Um, but yet today in 2023, let's say, we're not necessarily faced with some of those specific physical dangers. Uh, it's more so that when these certain kind of crazy moments in life come up, whether they're big or small or self-imposed or not, um, we get into this state naturally. And so you have to know that that will actually come of, you know, you living life, but then recognize that you can separate from that like Rockefeller did very, very well. We can blindly lead um, by these primal feelings, as I just talked about, or we can understand them. Discipline and perceptions let you clearly see the advantage and the proper course of action in every situation. So uh, maybe uh, said another way, um, oftentimes uh, for sports, uh, the head coach for the sports team is the one that is taking the step back and kind of watching the whole game as everyone operates within that game. And the reason they're doing that is because they're not trying to get so involved in the game itself, um, which allows them to be less emotional. And so they're able to make better decisions because they're not uh, in the trench, so to speak. And so their job is to exactly what Rockefeller did with his companies is to kind of understand the chaos and the stress of the situation and be able to step up and make a very logical decision for that specific time. Um, so the more we kind of get riled up, the more that we're going to make a not solid decision because it's going to be based on emotion rather than um, kind of logic and, and being able to, again, remain in your compass, uh, as this kind of describes here. Um, so nothing makes us feel a specific way. We choose how we feel. So this is a little bit of kind of the advanced methodology of even though we're going to have a reaction because of certain obstacles, we have the ability to change that. Um, the big thing here to take away is that we choose how we feel, meaning even though something is happening to us, we can pause for a moment and say, OK, we're going to calm ourselves down a little bit. I know everything's crazy going on right now, but somebody has to step up and choose to guide a guide to lead um, you know, everyone through this. Um, so this is how Rockefeller made his fortune, honing the ability to control and channel these signals from the market, from the universe and, and the work and everything. So most people are slaves to impulses and instincts because they're reacting on some of that primal nature. Rockefeller saw how many opportunities and disasters and obstacles, and he turned the experience into leverageable skills. So really all of this in a nice bow is saying that we have this hard wiring and because of this, we're going to have an emotional reaction no matter what. But if you have a learnable, uh, if you take the time to learn the ability to hone and control uh, your emotions and to really kind of wait and see what other people are doing, you may have the opportunity to become wealthy like Rockefeller or also just to kind of have a better outcome um, from everybody else because you are really taking the time to kind of pause and just observe um, within the chaos. Uh, so really just to kind of round things out here um, for the very first chapter and pillar um, in the obstacle is the way with the discipline of perception is it is a process, but a process that resides and results in self-discipline and logic. So this is basically very, very nicely reminding us that this isn't just some kind of random quote that you can read and, and use, you know, rarely. This is a legitimate process that you can rely on and something that resides in self-discipline and logic, meaning that the more you reside in it, the more calm and stable you're going to be to be able to make better decisions during those chaotic times. So a little bit of kind of talking over myself maybe in this uh, specific pillar, but I really hope that drives home uh, what kind of my takeaways were as I was reading about Rockefeller. And obviously, you know, give or take what your opinion is on him. He did something right because he amassed such a fortune. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Uh, but let's keep reading and let's get into the next one.